Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, we have a, I don't know, we have a guest today. I, I really, really can't even introduce him. I'm going to try to explain him more than introduce him. Uh, we'll be joining, he'll be joining us in a, in a, a few minutes. But he's one of those people, you know, you you really can't put the pedal to the metal. When you when you jump on your Harley, you just can't go as fast as, as it can go. It's too dangerous. You can't always paddle into the biggest wave, as I found out about three weeks ago in Hawaii. Uh, but one thing you can you can love with all your heart is the Chicago Cubs. No, I'm sorry. I meant the one thing that you can really love with all of your heart, all your soul, all your strength is Jesus. And we have a man on our show that uh, today that is definitely this man that when God says something, it, it's almost like this. When I was a kid, my dad would say to me, hey, Bear, will you go and do, and I'd already be running out the door not even knowing what I was supposed to be doing. I was so ready to do whatever, to jump and do whatever he asked. And that's Mike Stark. Before the Lord could hardly give a word out of his mouth, Mike is always, already running. He's like that verse in Habakkuk that says, uh, uh, run, you know, the, read the, write the letters in big enough letters so the one who's reading can run while they're reading. Well, he's one of these guys that I could just see if he was here at the Space Coast, and I watch rockets launch here uh, oh, maybe once or twice a month. Um, he would be like finishing the rocket as it was halfway up in space. He doesn't, he doesn't wait for anything. He's like Abraham. When God said to Abraham, get up and go to the place I'll show you, he got up and he left, and he did it, you know? And so, uh, and so we have as our guest today, I'm, like I said, I can't really introduce Mike Stark. I'm just trying to explain him. He's the kind of guy you would never, in his younger age, want your daughter to date. Let's put it that way. He's just dangerous. Uh, he's a weightlifter. He's uh, he he's got a great program called Download Jesus, and uh, he's a Chicago Cubs fan. Mike Stark, aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, Bear. Uh, I anticipate and I move forward, and hopefully I'm going in the right direction. Otherwise, I have to retrace my steps and go back. <laughs> but you are that way. I love that about you because you're like Peter. You know, can I jump out of the boat too, Jesus? You know, that's who you are. You're that guy that. Just is ready to get up and go. Whatever the Lord asks, you're ready. You're ready to go for it. You know. I try. Yeah. I, you know, don't always uh, don't always achieve the intended uh, goal at first, but uh, there's no reason in stopping. You just. Uh, my father always taught me uh, to uh, give everything your best effort and uh, be honest with people, and that's uh, treat others like you want to be treated. And if you do that, you're on the right path, and the rest you know will take care of itself. You know, Mike, it's like that, too, because, like, I think with all the lack of talent and ability that I have, the reason why the Lord has me do what I do is because he knows I'm going to do it. I might not be – I'll do the best job I can. Uh, someone might have been able to do a lot better job, but at least he knows if he asks you or me to do something, we're going to say yes, you know, and we just got to make sure we – kind of make sure we tune in enough. But I, I, I think a lot of what Mother Angelica said is true. When you feel that leading of the Spirit, that little nudge, move on it, and then God will direct your path. But it's so hard to direct someone's path when they're sitting on their couch yelling at Fox News. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, you do. I don't hey. yell at the TV. It doesn't accomplish anything. But uh, I have my opinions. You know, black and uh, white, there's really not much of a gray area with me. Well, you know, uh, speaking of which, um, my condolences about the recent uh, events in Chicago. Or no, I guess I don't know if it was in Chicago or Cincinnati. When the Cincinnati really? Reds came into, did they come into Chicago and sweep the Cubs? Is that you mean what happened? the la you mean the last place Cincinnati Reds? The Cubs went to Cincinnati to uh, to play the uh, to play the Reds, and the Reds wiped them out. But guess what? Um, at the end of the year, it's not going to matter because the Cubs will be like thirty games ahead of the Reds on their way to another World Series title. Well, we actually have a a mystery guest with us today, Matt Swain from Cincinnati. Would like to talk with you about that. Uh, Matt, are you there? Are you there, Matt? I guess Matt Swaim has left the building. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I know that he's a big Cincinnati Reds fan and he was gloating over that, but you're right. The Cubs the Cubs are going to the Cubs are going to have a good have a have a great team. And great I have a, I have a hat for you for my next segment. Uh growing up I was a big Red Machine fan. I loved Pete the big Rose. Red Machine. Was that Pete I love Rose? Pete Rose. I mean, what's yeah. come out lately has not been good, but nobody got more out of uh his God-given talent than Pete Rose. I, other I than Mike Stark. I mean, I mean, Pete Rose is a great example of who I say with the 
We need more Mike Starks in the world. People who are, are he was he, what was his name? Was he Mr. Hustle or what was what did they call him? Charlie it? Hustle. He was it was a nickname given to him by um, Whitey Ford and Mickey Mantle because in a spring training game down in Florida, his rookie year, he got a walk and he ran to first base and they're like, look at Charlie Hustle. They were making fun of him, but it stuck. Wow, you know what? Because nobody busted it harder than him. First to third. Uh, you get in his way. Ray Fossey knows uh, it's a bad idea to get in his way. He's like a linebacker playing the baseball. He played every, basically every position except pitcher, shortstop, and catcher. He played every other position. I don't know if he played center field, but he played both right, left, third, first. He started out as a second baseman. He he just he was the example of what you uh, would want to be uh, because. All-time hits leader, and he had that crouching stance. He wasn't he wasn't pretty doing it, but he uh, he just he gave it everything that God gave him to play with, and uh, nobody did it better. And the statistics will say it, even though he was a gambler. Everyone has a flaw, right? All, all, well, all I can say is, uh, uh, Mike, is that this Charlie Hustle <laughs> attitude of his is something that we need uh, in the new evangelization, as Matthew. Uh, calls it. We need to. We need. We need. We need men that'll get up and go. When I mean, I'll ask people. Um, you know, my my Bears man cave, which Mike Stark needs to become a member of. Um, it's where we have a video. We have a private Facebook group, and guys can come in and post there. But we also have every two or three weeks a Zoom video meetup. And I say, hey, everybody, let's have, every one of you guys bring one more man to the man cave. You know, and uh, how many of the, how many of those men will go out and duplicate? They have a great thing going, but how many? People will go out and invite more people to be part of what we're doing. Every single man out there, uh, there's something <laughs> they could be doing. You know that old saying, "Look, be, uh, Jesus is coming soon. Look busy. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is like that. We should. We should. That's kind of a positive thing, don't you think? We should look busy. <laughs> you should be busy. You should just look busy. And you don't think he does now. Like, he knew, uh, God knew when those people left uh, with, to get the oil for the lamps. Hey, should have had oil in the lamps. Oops. Oops. <laughs> the door's locked. Sorry, you can't come in. you okay. gotta, you got to be ready. And, and I can't honestly say that I am all the time. There's a lot of time where I'm just like, okay, whatever. You, you just stay focused and stay on track like that. You'd, you'd almost have to be a saint. I'm far from it. But uh, I know a lot of people that are. Saint Michael Stark. Hmm. We'll see. I got. I got we'll to work on you, that. What would you be? The, what would you be the the patron saint of? What would you be the patron saint of? Oh yeah, I, an audio bibles, I think. Audio bibles. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But I got to paint a picture for you, on radio. Mike's a uh, powerful looking man. Uh, he's wearing right now because we're recording this the day before Fourth of July, American flag shirt. And as I say that, when I said he's a powerful looking man, he started sitting up bigger and stretching his shoulders. I was showing my shirt. Hey, but oh, he was showing his shirt. He was showing the colors. Hey, Mike, let's talk with that. What's your physical regimen? Your physical workout regimen? Physical other regimen. Than, other than like golfing. What, what I do. Uh, well, I'm a baseball player. Also, I played football, obviously, growing up, uh, and played through college. And um, I always believed in uh, you know getting the most out of yourself. So I, I hit the weight room. I still still work out almost every day. I mean, I take some time off to play around, but uh, so I'm in the weight room four or five days a week. I'll usually hit the elliptical machine for about, now this is going to be boring, seriously. No, this, no, listen, Mike, this is important because <coughs> one of the things we do is we challenge men that if you're not in physical shape, you're not going to fulfill God's plan. You're not going to be able to fulfill the mission that has God has for you. We need to, okay. be, we need to have a healthy eating regimen, a workout regimen, a cardio regimen. We need to have all that for two reasons. One, if we can think more clearly. You know, well, let, me, let me ask you this. Well, go ahead, finish the workout regimen, then I got to Okay, work out. So I start, I start every workout on the elliptical machine. I do a, um, a uh, different, I do a program where I'm, I'm going uh, intervals. So I'll, I'll go hard for a minute, over 200 reps. I set it in the middle, and I'll go, then I'll go easy for 30 seconds, then hard for 30 seconds, easy for 30 seconds. And I'll, I'll vary it until I feel like, uh, you know, I do that for, um, for 35 minutes. And then I hit the weights. And bench pressing, you know, I'm, I can do 315, three plates for three right now. I can't do what I used to be. So able to you do. like to heavy lift? I'll hit the weight. I'll hit the bench press heavy, uh, but then I do a lot of um, I do a lot of circuit uh, training and and supersets because I'll hit uh, I'll do bench press with with uh, sit ups with a medicine ball. Then I'll do incline fly, uh, incline bench with uh, pullovers, and then I'll do dips with pec deck. 
So you're always doing something. What about something deadlifts? Are you, doing, are you doing deadlifts? And I don't deadlift anymore. I don't squat anymore. But I was squatting 500 pounds for reps um, a couple of years ago. And then my buddy who's a trainer is like, Mike, what are you doing that for? I'm like, I don't know, because I can. He's like, but you're 50 years old. You need to stop. I'm like, Be careful with your joints, I guess, is what he's saying. Right. But every, right. Athlete, yeah. every athlete has to know his body and listen to the body signals. And, you know, it's very rare in my life as an athlete. Uh, you know, I still compete in, uh, in surfing and lifting a woman over my head. Uh, right. When, we, when we surf. Yeah. But, I mean, I still – I'm always working around an injury. I can actually say that at this moment I only have a very slight tweak. But normally I have an injury of some sort. And I'm always having to figure out, okay, I'm going to do this type of workout instead of that. We're talking with Mike Stark. We're going to talk more about why he looks so incredibly vital, strong, good-looking. Um, what else did you tell me to say about you, Mike? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Let me. Where do I send the check? Yeah. Or do you want a direct deposit? So we'll be right back with our, our, our mystery guest, Mike Stark. He, you know, I, I call him a mystery guest. You know who he is, but he'll always be an enigma to me. We'll be right back. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, oh, man, do I have a great life. I have so much fun. Uh, Mike Stark and I have been working on getting this show recorded for about three hours. Uh, there was some anger involved, uh, but anger properly channeled can get things done. I was talking to the man who uh, has a great uh, Harley Museum over there by Asheville, North Carolina, and I said, how did you do this? And he said, faith, prayer, and anger. <laughs> so sometimes <laughs> anger is just determination, but I, really it says something about you, Mike. It, uh, we started this process about four hours ago to get this interview started. We had some technical issues, and it speaks to Well, you called me when I was sleeping, too. I mean, I'm just not good with getting I'm, Your name's Bear, but I'm the guy you don't poke like when I'm sleeping. <laughs> but the thing about it is fortitude, the virtue of fortitude. We got her done. We just we we just kept <laughs> we just kept moving forward. You know, we never we just kept trying this and trying that. We had great technical help, thankfully, and we we kept moving forward until we got you on got you on for this show. But we're talking with Mike Stark, and we had, we were talking about first of all physical fitness because I think it has so much to do with our spiritual life. But you were saying that you do a, a interval training on the elliptical. We have an elliptical right here in the house. I I never use it unless it's rainy and cold and I can't get outside. Because I usually do my beach workouts, stand up, paddle out, rigger, canoe, surf, stuff like that. But um, but then you you have a circuit training, which is really cool. They call it, some places call it kind of a cross training thing now too, because you're working out your body in all different sorts of all all sort of different angles and ways, right? And you would tell us about the medicine ball. Well, um, the medicine ball it's just like a big basket. It's a basketball that weighs uh, eight pounds, and when I do my sit ups um, on an angle board, a decline. I go from side to side, and I throw the ball down, catch it, then I go to the other side because you're working your abs all the way through. You're the getting way your obliques and everything. You want to work your body the way it was intended to be used. If you're twisting and turning and you're doing all these other things with independent weights like dumbbells, uh, now this is like a Jack LaLanne show, um, it's it's something where you are you want to use your body the way it's meant to be used. So you need to stretch it. You need to flex it. You need to you know do all the different movements that your body does while you're training so you're you don't catch yourself like lifting a garage door and blowing your, you know, back out or swinging a golf club or whatever and tweaking your neck. You you want your body to work the way the Lord intended. So you for need you to cardio. Use it. You need strength, which is resistance. And you need to eat training. right. You alluded to that earlier, Barry. You, you need. To, tell, you can't, tell me about you, your eating regimen. Burger King, McDonald's, Dairy Queen. I love Slurpees. Um, I love the cement mixers at Dairy Queen. You know. Um, you just name it. No, um, I do love all that food, but in in um, in um, um, Kevin Matthews is calling me right now. <laughs> uh, in uh, in good uh, balance with eating your, you know, turmeric uh, and your protein and your greens and salads and just you gotta you gotta balance the diet. You can't just eat a bunch of garbage and expect to look good. So it's. It's everything combined, but people know that. So, but no, uh, no, no, they don't know that. And the th thing is, we need to be inspired and challenged. Eating, right? Uh, the proper eating. Right, try not to eat sh sugary cereals. Try and eat, uh, you know, Cheerios or eat something that's that's in between. You don't need to eat dirt. You know, you don't have to have 
like granola and all this stuff that maybe um, tofu and stuff that you probably don't enjoy. You want to be able to enjoy what you eat, or you're not going to stay with but it. If you stay, if you stay on the outer rims of the Safeway store or the grocery store, you're probably going to be eating healthier than if you eat all the preservatives and the exactly. sugar carbs. That's but, a very good point. Exactly. And so if you, if you, so let's talk about that. So the outside got, of the store is the healthy, new, uh, fresh stuff. The inside is just the stuff in the boxes that you'd store away for a nuclear war. <laughs> yeah. And but so I have, a it's priest, I have a priest friend who oh, dehydrates food and he stores it. So he's dehydrating healthy food and he stores it. Now he's a prepper and he's a priest. So the thing about it is, is, is it's the same thing with our spiritual life, though. We need to chew. We need to, we need to have organic food. We need to take good, good care of our spiritual nutrition. And Paul was really strong about it. He said, you know, even what you think about, what, you wa what are you going to allow to watch on TV? I, I get to watch about an hour of news at the most uh, in a day, maybe a half hour, and then I know it's bad for me because it's especially the way it is these days. Uh, oh. But think on these things, whatever is good, Ooh. whatever is pure, whatever is excellent, think on these things and reading the scriptures and praying praying the name of Jesus and praying the rosary and, and going through the going through um, the liturgy of the hours. That's your nutrition. But you're not going to grow strong if you don't have resistance training. And resistance training comes by stepping out in faith. You know, it's right. like going against, you know, our life is a life of adversity, but so many people are just pushovers because they've never trained themselves in fortitude. When you go to the gym and you train yourself to get on that elliptical when you don't feel like it, that type of fortitude translates over to when there's a challenge in your finances or a challenge with a family member, that, that fortitude that you built up in the gym will work for you when you're in those life circumstances. So the physical part of your life, uh, resistance training, and then there's the cardio. All of that, uh, all of that has to, and the and the flexibility training. We need to learn to be docile to the Holy Spirit. All of that works together in our physical and our spiritual world. So, let you know, go for it. What it, what's your thoughts? What I was going to add on to that, you you nailed it. Is when I used to lift weights, it was to be you know training for football. I, I hated running when it was 95 degrees and humid outside. Like, oh, but I got to do it because I want to be the best. Same thing with baseball or whatever you're doing, getting up early and, you know, training here in the Chicago area in the snow, get up and freeze your tail off to get over to the gym to, to throw baseball or whatever. Same thing applies to the Catholic church or to your faith. I'm not even going to say Catholic church because there's people that aren't Catholic that they'll come around eventually maybe. But the point is, Pray that rosary every day. I pray a rosary every day. I sit in traffic, so I, I have a rosary that I bring with me. But don't listen to the radio. Just pray a rosary. You know, it's not that hard. Try and stay focused with it, but every day at least pray a rosary. Talk to God when you get up. And I don't always do it when I get up because I know I'm going to pray during the day, but it's like training. It's like flossing your teeth. If you don't floss your gum, you're going to get gum disease. If you don't lift, you're going to get flabby. If you don't eat right, you're going to, you know, decay inside. If you don't pray, if you don't have a, a spiritual life, you're decaying. You can't just punch in, like Matthew Kelly says. You can't just punch in and punch out. And um, you know, I'm in. Okay, your mask. I'm out. See you next week. I want to go to heaven. See my time card. The guys are gonna be like, hey, that's cool, but you, do you really want to be with me? Because you had all these distractions. You didn't focus on me at all, uh, except for that one hour a week because you feel guilty that. That's okay, what I want to talk about that, Mike Stark. So. You got a person that's uh, physically not healthy. You know they're not eating right. They're not exercising. Right. When you when you exercise, say it's an hour a day of working out, uh, whether it's walking on the beach or whatever you're doing doing, it doesn't take any time away from your day, and it certainly doesn't take a any time away from your life, because when you're more vital and more healthy like that, you've you're got live longer. <laughs> you, well, but yeah, you're more alert and you're more productive with your day. And you're going to add decades to your life, probably. So, so, but part of this thing is is when we when we devote ourselves in that way, uh, as you said, uh, uh, it's a choice. It's 100% under your control how you eat and if you're going to work out or not. Now, eventually, there's an accumulative effect. If you're not doing that, your body's going to break down, your joints are going to break down, and you, then you're going to be trapped. But it's the same thing true in our spiritual life. Going to heaven. Wouldn't you say is a hundred percent under our control? It a is a matter of our choice. That Jesus is going to look at you and say, um, "You know, you didn't want to be with me. I mean, you just you just punched in and punched out, but that wasn't really 
what I wanted from you. And I'm, I'm not saying you need to be a, a cloistered nun. Um, I'm saying that when you're walking or when you're running or you're working out or whatever, you can plug, put your uh, ear, earbuds in and listen to, for instance, Truth and Life Audio Bible, or you can listen to the rosary, or you can listen to the liturgy. There's so much stuff out there for you to consume, whether it's a word on fire, Bishop Barron's got great stuff. Um, we can, there's everything available to you. Dial in and, and take a minute to know God better. And if you just pray a rosary, that's fine. But how hard is it to remember the rosary and have a, you know, have a little, you know, whether it's a, a rosary itself or one of those little rings that has it on there. I mean, we have it. fingers. We have fingers. We do have fingers. Um, the point is you can do this and you can do it while you're healing your body physically. You can heal yourself spiritually as well, or just keep you ready for what's coming because eternity is a long time to be, you know, when, whenever uh, you come in the room, Mike, and in bed. Yeah. whenever you come in the room, Mike, it's like, watch out, something just happened. What's, what happens? There's this energy when you come in the room. is a physical energy, and there's a spiritual energy. When, when, when you walk in the room, there's like, it's like, uh, uh-oh, it's like, uh-oh, um, something a little bit unbalanced might happen here. Something unexpected might happen here. There's an energy that's coming this way that, that isn't uh, just kind of, um, you know, me- mediocre going with the flow. M- Mike, when you, whatever you bring to the game, you bring bring it with all your heart, with all your strength, because when you spend time with the Lord every day, you're dangerous. To you know, you can't help but evangelize. <laughs> you can't help but evangelize when you spend an hour every day in, with the Lord in, in prayer. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. Our guest is Mike Stark. He's the guy who created the Download Jesus app. We're going to talk more about that with him when we get back. But we want to encourage you guys to go to our our, our YouTube channel. Bear Wozniak YouTube channel. It's Bear, and the last name is W-O-Z-N-I-C-K, where you can actually watch our our interviews. And we need your help. YouTube has said that if we can add about 700 more subscribers, they're going to blow up our channel a little bit more. So we need you to go to uh, YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd appreciate that. And you go to our website, and men, uh, you can join Bear's Man Cave. It's a private Facebook group uh, where we post uh, to challenge and equip and mobilize each other. And then every two or three weeks, we have a video chat meetup. So go to deepadventure.com and sign up for the Bears Man Cave. You have to go there. You can't do it by going to Facebook. Uh, This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're going to be back with our mystery guest, Mike Stark. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide. Bear Wozniak, you know, the, a lot of people love our, our show, Long Ride Home. Uh, it's a 10-episode series that's been airing on EWTN and the Armed Forces Network. And it's soon, I think probably by the time this airs, it'll be showing on iTunes and Amazon Prime, which is, I believe, the first EWTN-type show to ever get to that type of distribution channel. So we're really excited about their accepting our show and, 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 and beginning to air that. And we have a brand-new website, the deepadventure.com website's been put together by a new one's been put together by a great team and we want you to go there and join uh bears mug club we'll send you out a really cool coffee cup uh for your um interest in our ministry and we have and you get additional uh time with me we'll do i'll be doing video rooms and things like that too and you get access to a, a facebook group through the mug club mug club is for everybody uh but the bears man cave is for men only and the women uh, should be signing up their husbands and their sons and their son-in-laws and brothers. And, and even, you know, the men, if you're a member of the Man Cave, and to, you know, give your, give your, your local pastor a, a membership to it, too. So we're talking with a guy that, I, I, as I said at the beginning of the show, he's the first guest I've ever had where I really can't introduce him. I just try to explain him a little bit. But uh, maybe just by talking to him, you get a better sense of this man. He's a, he's a, man, uh, he's a man of action, a uh, powerful love for the Lord, and, and always ready to move on the Lord's inspiration. And one of the things that Mike Stark did, uh, it's, it's just the coolest thing, this Download Jesus app. It's got Mike, that's, that's, the Mike, Stark, uh, that's Mike Stark's gutsy, uh, stepping out in faith uh, uh, project. Can you tell us about how that, how did you even get that idea, and how did that all happen, Mike? And well, what let's, is it? Let's, Let's back up. It's, uh, it's, it wasn't my idea to start with. Uh, it was my good friend, Carl Amari. Um, and we created the Truth in Life audio Bible. 
And um, we did that about seven years ago using celebrities. And the way it happened is we made a movie actually down in the Cincinnati area, um, Madison, Indiana, actually, um, about powerboat racing in the 70s. True story. And we got this unknown actor, or very little known. He'd done a movie called Frequency at the time, Jim Caviezel, to play the lead. And he was I've great. I've heard of him. I've heard now, of him. I, well, everybody's heard of him now. But the I'm point was, Go ahead. back in the early 2000s, he wasn't that well known. So we got him to play the lead role in this very family-focused um, movie called Madison. And he did oh. a great job. But him and Carl became very close. And he invited Carl over to Rome because he was going to um, – play in this other movie that Mel Gibson was designing now or producing. But let me tell you, you'll love this. Mel Gibson was afraid to tell him that he wanted him to play uh, Jesus. So he told him when they first met, he was going to play a surfer. This is a true story, Bear, that Mel Gibson told Caviezel he was going to play a surfer because he knew that if he told Jim he was going to play our Lord and Savior, that he was going to be like, no way, dude, I'm not playing Jesus. I'm not, I'm not worthy. So he didn't tell him that. So... He used a surfer hook to get him to come to the meeting, and then he told him what the movie was all about. And Carl went over to Rome with, you know, to spend some time with Jim while he was filming The Passion. And, you know, it was there when he got struck by lightning on the cross, and there was a lot of stuff that was going on. But when Carl told me that they were doing a movie and Jim was playing Jesus, I laughed. I said, he doesn't look anything like him. And, you know, because knowing who he is, um, and then I laughed. I said, oh, it's going to be uh, in Aramaic, which I had no idea what that was, and subtitled. In a language that's not even Spanish or German or, you know, like we'd watch the war movies and be German or Japanese and you see the subtitles. But what's Aramaic? I guess it's Japanese to me. But anyway, uh, the point is Mad Max was going to direct it. How good could it be? And, well, we know how we know how that turned out. While Carl was over there, Mel was asking, like, what do you do, mate? You know, what, what, what is it that you do? And Jim explained to him that he, uh, to, to Mel that Carl did old-time radio. He's got a radio show called Hollywood 360 and the number one show in Chicago on the weekends called WGN Radio Theater. He's got the rights to all the old radio shows like The Shadow, Suspense, Burns and Allen. Mm. So he's been doing that for like over 30 years and he's in his early 50s. So it's kind of funny that this this uh, sort of radio uh, nerd, uh, you know, just loved it and turned it into a career for himself. So Mel's like, well, why don't you make an audio Bible, mate? And so he did. And he did came he to say, me to help him did produce. Did he say might or mate? Might. Might. Right, right, right. right. That's not, that's not Frankie. Nice. So they, they did that, and Carl came to me, and my father had just passed. My love for the church goes back to um, I was adopted out of the Archdiocese of Chicago's St. Vincent's Center as an infant, and I ended up in Lake Forest, Illinois, which is one of the wealthiest towns in the country. So I really lucked out. And I had a Navy officer uh, as a father, I and mean, he was retired, but he was a Naval officer. He grew up in Chicago, grew up in the uh, with the nuns, with the rulers on the knuckles and everything else. My mom was from uh, central southern Illinois, uh, down near St. Louis, where those uh, those cardinals are, um, and not the kind in the church, not the good kind. But I have I a lot of respect. Are you referring to a baseball team? St. Louis Cardinals, yes. Oh, and before I forget, I told you I had something for you earlier. Here you go. How's oh, that? so that, right. that what is that? Is that that's Cincinnati? That's a Cincinnati Red that's, batting that's helmet. Charlie Hustle right there, and you can wear the Chicago yes, sir. Cubs hat. And the other thing I want you to know, I am a bear. I'm a bear fan too, but that would be Duck Bears, my friend, uh, Chicago Bears. Not but, me. Not. not but I, I, I'm I'm a big fan of you too, brother. I mean, I love I love your passion for your faith, and it's always neat to have somebody that um, is a sports-minded person that can bring excitement into the faith. Cause I think a lot of people just look at religion as this drab um, preach preacher type thing. And that's not, that's not what you're doing with the new evangelization, but back to this Bible. So we created this audio Bible with, um, with celebrities voicing the roles and made it dramatized like an old time radio show. And so that's what you've got with the truth in life. Audio Bible is you get to listen to it. You get to hear the sounds of the nails going into the cross and the wood splitting as Jesus is being crucified or, the water being poured at the marriage at Cana. Um, and then my good friend Scott Hahn, Dr. Scott Hahn, has lent the Ignatius Study Bible to it. So anything that's underlined, you tap on the words and you see. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. That's in oh, there. Oh, that and study Bible is amazing. Wow. Yeah, it's got the search tool. It's the whole Ignatius Study Bible. And by the way, uh, Scott told me this spring, he says, I'm done with the Old Testament. So that's all in our app. So the, the Old Testament will be there now, too. 
just not the audio yet. We haven't done the audio yet, but the audio for the New Testament, but the Ignatius Study Bibles, the whole thing, it's completely done. And he looked like a man totally Exhausted. relieved because he said, I've been working on this for 25 years and it's finally done. Right. Awesome. So that's in there. And the I've way got we the New Testament. With, I've got it. I got the Ignatius uh, New well, Testament that he did. Yeah. But it's all in the app. So basically, as you go through the Bible, you'll see underlined words. Everything's in there. But it, at that point, when you're reading John 3.16, you tap on what what it means for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Um, or marriage at Cana, uh, it talks about how Mary uh, must have been a relative to the wedding party, which is something I didn't think of. But as you're going along listening to the Bible and you see something that was kind of you're curious about, you just tap on it and Dr. Hahn answers that. There's maps. There's It's it's all oh, inclusive. There's so much beautiful. there, and that's that's what's in it. And the way we got download Jesus was uh, a good friend of mine, Father James Mulford, who was the founder of Zenit, an American priest, but he was over in Rome. He speaks several languages. Came up with the idea. He said, "Mike, truth and life is too busy a name. Hard is it truth in life? Is it truth and life? Ampersand? Is it what is it?" Well said. He's very smart come up man. With something. Yeah. He said, "Why don't you make it simple?" So why you come up with something like downloadjesus.com? I'm like, oh, right. I'm sure the Protestants took that as soon as Al Gore invented the internet, dude. But, <laughs> I, and I, I kind of said, uh, I'll use nice words here because we're uh, on Catholic television. I said, well, there's, there certainly is a Jack um, something that Jesus wrote in the, uh, in the room right here, and it's got to be you, buddy. And he says, he looks it up, he says, it's available. And now you're the Jack thing that uh, Jesus rode into uh, town with a, on Palm Sunday. But anyway, the point is, um, Download Jesus was available. We took it, and it just seems a simple way for you to remember it, that DownloadJesus.com is where you'll find the Truth and Life Audio Bible if you want to put it on your phone. And for the most part, it's free. You can buy the additional audio and the study Bible. You get Mark for free, but it gives you an opportunity to explore the Bible in a different way. You can listen to it. Again, you can listen to it in traffic. You can listen to it while you're working out. You really have no excuse. When you say you don't have time, I say, you, you, how much time do you spend in traffic? You're going to have eternity time? someday and wonder, <coughs> why didn't I take the time? You know. Well, eternity is going to be really warm if you don't take the time. <laughs> and I'm not, who am I to judge? But I'm just saying, you know, Jesus is going to judge and he's going to say, you really didn't, you really didn't tap into my love, dude. <laughs> right. So, talking your language now but i'm just saying that i just feel that we uh, don't say dude dude okay whatever dude okay um, dude. whatever uh whatever but, uh but anyway the point is that it's just a, another way in the new evangelization to do what we're supposed to do and we're talking with with mike stark he is uh he's the he's the person that says yes when god when god uh you know um gives him a mission and you know mike is uh, Mike is like me. We're diamond. We're diamonds in the rough. Maybe we're not even diamonds, but, um, but we, oh. you know, you know. How can I say it better than this? The thing about it, Mike, is you do what God. We, God asks you, and you're ready to go. And God is looking for the willing, not necessarily the most talented or the most skilled. Although Mike is definitely those. He's looking for the willing, and we as we need to be ready to say yes to the Lord and and um, and and respond to Him. And when you do that, as we as I said at the beginning of the show. Our creed here at Deep Adventure Ministries is the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And for those, we're not talking to those of you who are sitting on the couch. We're talking to those of you who the allure of being heroic draws you. And there's nothing more heroic than being a Christian. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure and our guest, Mike Stark. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, we surfers use this word called stoked. One of my most favorite things to do is to ruin someone's life by teaching them to surf, especially to teach younger people while their parents are watching because their whole hopes and dreams for their children go down the drain when you see them learn to surf because, you know, all they're ever going to think about, all they're ever going to want to do is just surf, 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 surf. So, Last Sunday after Mass, we, we came went down to the beach, and there's these two young guys from uh, Sacramento, Jonah and 
his brother Ryan, and I told him I'd do a shout out for them. And they just looked like such fun kids, and the surf was not quite big. The tide was too high. It wasn't bur- surf wasn't breaking yet. And I taught them how to body surf. It's so fun to get to talk to kids, you know. You don't get to talk to them unless their parents are nearby these days or, you know, like it's danger zone, you know. But their parents are right there, and I, they're down in the water, and I'm showing them how to submarine into a wave. And then I grab, I get off my board, and I show them. I grab one of them and throw them out, have them jump on my board, and I push them into a couple waves. And I can tell it's okay with their parents. I haven't even met them, but the parents are now taking pictures. And Jonah surfs like a, like just surfs so good. And then Ryan uh, surfs so good. And then I loan them one of our good boards, uh, another board that would suit them, and they're, they're surfing. And then Cindy and I go out, and we're tandem surfing, and I see a, another guy that's struggling down the beach trying to catch waves. And he's obviously a good athlete, but he's got the wrong equipment. And I, and I say, Cindy, take your, take your stand-up paddle to the beach and let you and I tandem surf. And we'll meet, So I had that guy go in, and I let him use Cindy's, uh, Cindy's board, which was much better for him. Now he's standing up, and he's surfing, and he's – having the time of his life. He he's, he's only gets to be here for one day. He came in from Alabama, and the kids only got to be there for one day. But I ruined their lives. And then I gave the kids a poster and autographed a couple books for them. And you know what I did? As I launched, I got to see three new people be more excited than they have ever been, uh, or as excited as they've ever been in their lives because they learned how to surf. But, man, how much more cool and more fun it is to introduce someone to Jesus. How much more cool is it to start someone off on an eternity, an eternal wave, you know, a, a destiny that goes off into eternity? Uh, that's what we're all about here at, New, at uh, uh, Deep Adventure Ministries. And I'm really sick and tired of Christians who don't share the gospel. The catechism actually says it's necessary to proclaim the gospel if you want to go to heaven. Uh, dudes, if you love Jesus, first of all, you should be joyful. You should be happy. They should see it. And if you're not joyful and happy, it's probably because you haven't been spending time in adoration, haven't been spending an hour every day with the Lord. When you, you know, when out of the beach yesterday, too, I noticed a lot of people, not from the area, were laying out. And at the beginning of the day, they looked white. And at the end of the day, they looked red. They didn't even know they were getting a sunburn. Same thing is when you spend time with Jesus, uh, you know, listening to the, the Bible on the Download Jesus app or, or praying the Liturgy of the Hours, um, going to adoration, going to Mass. You're getting a suntan. You're getting a spiritual suntan. You may not even feel it, but something's happening, and, you, and you're, you're going, something begins to glow, and you go out into the real world. You want to share the gospel. You're looking for opportunities to show love, to lift people up, to not uh, make someone feel less than you, but make them feel uh, the full dignity of who they are in Christ. So we want to encourage you guys, evangelize, evangelize, evangelize. Share the good news. You only have a short time on this earth, and the only thing you can take with you to heaven is other people. We're talking with just such a man, uh, my good friend. Uh, you think? You think? How? Let's never arm wrestle each other, okay? Because I don't want to be humiliated. We're talking with Mike Stark. He's giving me a shock uh, on our YouTube channel because we're using we're using YouTube. Uh, you can watch the show on, on the Bear Wasnick YouTube channel too. If you don't know what the shock is, it's the hang loose sign from Hawaii. So, Mike, oh. uh, tell us more about download. Okay, what do you want? I'll give you a chance to defend yourself. About share, tell us the joy of sharing the gospel with people. Well, I was going to say at first uh, when you start talking about Jonah, I was thinking there was maybe Moby Dick was involved or something like that. But uh, He's a, he was what? in the water though; he was surfing. <laughs> oh, uh, Jonah funny. and Ryan from Sacramento, shout out! Jonah and Ryan, they're the two Jonah best surfers in Sacramento. Not Jonah and the whale. Um, so I defend myself. I, you know, I really. Uh, guess, no, no uh, tell me about the joy of sharing the gospel. Oh, well, I think I want to defend myself really quick because when the priest at the end of Mass says, uh, occasionally he'll say, go forth and proclaim the gospel of the Lord, I, you know, I'll say, thanks be to God. Or, But sometimes I'll just say to myself, yeah, I do every day. Because every day there's an opportunity to share it there. Um, there really is. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of environment you're in, whether I'm out on a boat in Lake Michigan with a bunch of, you know, fun people um, or whether I'm, you know, doing something work-related or even at the gym, um, there's always an opportunity to, you know, kind of talk to somebody about it. It's funny how the Lord presents these people to you. And for whatever reason, they may have a need Amen. at that time. They may not. They may be interested. They may not. And I'm working on a couple people. The one, the one thing that I found the most enjoying lately is, you know, one of my very best friends is Father Michael Grezik. And he's a, he's a new priest. He's been a priest now for three years. He just got transferred to a new parish. 
uh, the Lord blessed me by putting him at my home parish for uh, the last three years as he came out of seminary. And I met him because he wanted to buy the Truth and Life, the complete contents for all the seminarians himself. He was going to buy 260 some units. And I said, I you know, wanted to know if he could get a deal. And I said, now, nah. I said, there's really no deal. I mean, you're already getting, you get the audio for 20 bucks or the study Bible for 20 bucks, or you get them combined for 30 bucks and that's it for life. Whatever we add, there's no additional cost, blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, but that's like $7,000. I don't think I'll have it. I said, well, there is one program I have for priests and, and seminarians. He's like, oh, what is that? I said, it's free. I don't charge <laughs> priests anything. I mean, it's paying it forward. It's like, look, if you find this useful, you'll share it with your parish. So you'd be talking to thousands of people in your life. Just tell them that, hey, you can have a Vatican endorsed, endorsed by Pope Benedict, by Pope Francis. It is endorsed by everybody. So it's completely okay in the Catholic Church to share this. So we became best friends ever since. I thought I was your best friend, Mike. Well, you always you said know, I was your best friend. I didn't think you had any other friends, actually. <laughs> I've got five. You know, they always say there's five. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think who the other three are. Um, but, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Carl Amari's one. I already said that. I know you have. A, I know you have a, your golfing buddies with Bishop Barron too. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. He. I haven't played golf with him in a long time. Now that he's out in California. Yeah. I guess uh, it's Pope Francis and Pope Benedict are your two other close buddies then, probably. I was going to say me, myself, and I, but that's a little arrogant <laughs> yeah. and self-absorbed. But yeah, talk, uh, talk Jesus, to us. Jesus is my best friend. Hey, man, uh, me too. Hello. Me too. <laughs> so tell us more. So you, so so you're giving him the opportunity to have this this app, but you're talking about sharing the gospel. Sharing the gospel, and what he loves to do is um, is reconciliation. He's like a priest about reconciliation. He um, he's a, he, you know found his vocation later in life. He went to Medjugorje a ton of times, and he really became touched. By Our Lady, and he's a very Marian priest, and he's added a Hail Mary to every Mass he's ever celebrated, and he's all about Mary, and that's something that, uh, not something about Mary, which was a funny movie, by the way, um, but I digress. Um, As you are known to do. Uh, <laughs> if I didn't digress, God would say, I just digressed. I just digressed right along with you. Right. Well, I mean, let's look at the apostles for a minute. They weren't exactly rocket scientists and scholars. They were they were a bunch of, they were a Motley Crue, another uh, band from the 80s. But, and I digress again, but the point is that uh, he loves reconciliation, giving you an opportunity to heal yourself through the Lord. And I brought several of my friends who hadn't been to confession and, you know, one hadn't been there in like 35 years. One hadn't been there since, uh, since the um, early 90s. So, I mean, that I get joy in just by, you know, your influence, people look at me, almost feel, I don't like it when people say, oh, you're a Jesus freak, or you're going to, you know, you're born again, or this, and no, I'm not. I've always had faith, but I, I like to nudge people. You don't want to be too aggressive with people about it, but you just want to let them know, hey, have you have you talked to the Lord lately? Do you realize what he's doing for you? Uh, it's a beautiful day outside, or do you realize I was talking to a gentleman yesterday who said he's spiritual, he's not godlike, but he said, Two times when he thought his life was going out of control, um, he uh, he said, "God, don't let me die like this," because he was doing drugs, you know, years ago, and his kids were around. And he says, "What what what am I doing?" And I said, "Well, then you have to realize that God spared you, because you thought for sure you were going to die, and although you're not acknowledging God, but you're acknowledging a, a higher power." He said, <clears throat> "Acknowledge whatever you want to acknowledge, but know that somebody created this world, and it's God." And, and you can you know him. Him. And you can yeah. actually know Jesus. So anyone who's listening right now, we're talking with Mike Stark. Uh, if you're Catholic, uh, go to confession. I've heard so many great, incredible stories lately, a lot lately, of people who have been to church in a long time and feel so far away from Jesus. And the confessional is where they, they receive tremendous healing and an infusion of God's grace. But right now, just pray with me. Lord, I, 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 I'm, I'm adrift. I've, I've gone down the wrong path, I'm lost, and I'm confused, and I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart, uh, forgive my sins, and put me on the right path. Uh, bring me, bring me uh, to, to the narrow way. Lord, I'm, I'm not worthy, uh, but please come into my life. And Jesus, Jesus, uh, Jesus is throwing a big party in heaven. It's kind of a come-as-you-are pa- party. Uh, right here on earth, all we have to say is, Jesus, forgive me. Uh, he loves you unconditionally. He is the God of mercy and the God of hope. And he will come into your heart and fill your heart and set, and set you on a new path. Uh, Mike Stark, how can they download? Uh, give us real quick, how can they get download Jesus? 
Go to www.downloadjesus.com. It's that simple. Look up downloadjesus.com. And you can get um, it on the iPad and iPhone and everything else. Well, too. you can go on the iTunes store. It's Truth and Life Bible. But you, you just look up, search Truth and Life Bible in there, but in the iTunes store. But you can, and it's good for Android as well. Just go look up on Google uh, downloadjesus.com and it'll get you there. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I have to tell you guys to go to my website, deepadventure.com, get my two books, get all kinds of long ride home gear. Sign your man up for the Bears Man Cave. So much more stuff going on there. We'll be back next week with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Until then, Viva Cristo Rey, and may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha.